All right, Westmore Central, how are you today? Matt Ferreri, Director of School Counseling here once again uh, with another admissions interview. Uh, today, I'm here with Mr. Jason Santiago of Harvey Mudd College, Associate Director of Admission. Jason, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Really appreciate you taking the time uh, to tell us about Harvey Mudd. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what should our students know about Harvey Mudd College? Yeah, so... As you said, my name is Jason Santiago. I'm an associate director of admission here. I've been here for about 10 years and admission, but I also went to school here. So graduated in 2007. I think usually like the, the very short elevator pitch, you know, if we have just a few minutes with students, what I like to say is Harvey Mudd College is in Southern California. Uh, we're about an hour east of Los Angeles and we're one of the Claremont colleges. So we are part of a consortium of small liberal arts colleges, uh, we are directly next to each other. So our footprint is a square mile. Um, you can walk from campus to campus. You don't have to sort of navigate a shuttle system. And Harvey Mudd of the consortium is the one that's very STEM focused. So we are a liberal arts college focused on STEM. We very much share characteristics with many other liberal arts colleges in, in terms of our size and the teaching focus. Uh, but we only offer 10 majors, all in science, engineering, and math. And so we like to say that we offer like the best of both worlds in terms of like giving you the kind of experience you can expect at a small college, but within the setting and the resources and a community that's sort of more akin to a small to mid-sized university. Okay, great. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the consortium? I know that the five colleges, right? Um, I didn't really, I knew they were close. I didn't realize they were that close together. Um, are students able to take classes at different colleges, different campuses? How does it work? Yeah, yeah, excellent question. So the, the members of the Claremont Colleges or at least the undergraduate uh, colleges here in Claremont are Pomona College, Scripps College, Claremont McKenna College and Pitzer College. So five, altogether, we are five of the top 50 liberal arts colleges in the United States we were founded as a consortium. So like the history of it's really fascinating because when Pomona was first and when there was pressure from the local area for them to grow, they said, no, you know, the whole idea is that we would be a small school. And so then the consortium was born and five, you know, a hundred years later, five separate liberal arts colleges now sort of occupy the same space and operate independently, but share everything that makes sense. So students can not only take classes at the other colleges. I mean, I think at Harvey Mudd, we very confidently say that 100% of our students will take at least one class at, at the other Claremont colleges. Uh, many of them like to play a game of bingo in terms of being able to take at least one class uh, at, at each school. Uh, they can even major, access majors at the other colleges. The general rule of thumb is if your school, the school that you are enrolled at doesn't offer the major, you can generally sort of uh, try to access that major at another college here in Claremont. And then in addition to that, we also share like clubs and organizations, um, support services, athletics. There's actually two varsity teams in Claremont. We are each other's rivals and the social life is shared. And so, you know, 900 students in Harvey Mudd, but there are about 6,000 overall across the Claremont colleges. Wow. All right. Great. That sounds like a really unique setup um one that i don't think we have too often over here on the east coast um so 900 students there six thousand amongst the the consortium can you get and you mentioned your your rivals to a degree in some of the varsity sports can you give us a little bit more feel of the campus culture at harvey mudd yeah so very much at Harvey Mudd, right? Like we, as a STEM focused school, you'll you'll find students that very much are incredibly passionate about science, engineering, and math. It's it's their plan for college. It's their plan for the future. So you'll definitely share, like you'll definitely get that sense from students as like, oh, I mean, I don't want to say nerdy because I think you know being in STEM is pretty cool. Uh, but you'll find other students here who are super excited about science, engineering, and math. But what's great about being part of the consortium and just being at Harvey Mudd in general is that, you know, I think we draw students who are really excited about so many different things, just about learning in general and I think growing as individuals and trying out new things while they're at college. So it's a pretty tight knit community. Um, it's very collaborative and supportive. There's not really a ton of competition for like grades and opportunities. 
Uh, and so students uh, live on campus for four years. You're required, students, first year students are required to live on campus, actually. And at Harvey Mudd, you know, first year students are scattered uh, across the nine residence halls. So we don't have a first year residence hall. And you'll find like very much like the STEM interests highly represented, but they'll do so many other things on top of that. And we get to, I think, attract those students because of what we share across the Claremont colleges. And so it's a pretty active place. Like there's usually something to do evenings and weekends. You don't have to leave Claremont, though we highly encourage students to get out and experience what Los Angeles has to offer since it's so close by. Um, but you know, it's it's you know five small liberal arts colleges, and so we're not we're not our athletics are at Division three, so we don't have we have like athletics and we have the big football games, but not necessarily like going to be on like you know network TV uh, on weekends. Um, and we don't have students sometimes ask, do you have Greek life? We don't specifically have Greek life at the Claremont colleges, but it's a it's an it's, a, it's an incredibly engaging place to be. Uh, you can get involved in clubs and organizations not only at the school that you belong to, but then across the Claremont colleges. So you know, if you feel really comfortable and want to just keep your experience to Harvey Mudd, that's totally possible. But we have many students who just want to break out of that, and then so they'll walk across the street where the culture is slightly different, but because it's just one big family, you know, you're you're just sort of a member of of the Claremont colleges overall, even though you're a student specifically at one of us. Oh, great. And any fun traditions you can share with us? I mean, you don't need to have the big football game, right, to have to have fun on campus. What, what are some of the traditions there? Yeah. So we have a student run honor code, um, which means, you know, we we give our students a lot of responsibility, but also give them a lot of freedoms. You asked about fun traditions. <laughs> the part the, the part that comes with that, that is more fun, um, it gives our students, I think, a lot of opportunity and I think ability to have fun within sort of the, the restrictions of, you know, just taking responsibility and, you know, for your own integrity and the integrity of the community. Um, and so we have a pretty healthy prank culture. So all pranks at Harvey Mudd have to be reversible within 24 hours. So there's nothing that can cause lasting damage. And if that does happen, you know, we sort of handle that through sort of the honor board system. Uh, and so, you know, it's equal opportunity. So if you don't want to be pranked, you don't have to be. Um, but you also can't like be going out there and pranking other students. Uh, and they also try to sort of take the pranks off campus, you know, to some of our what, what students perceive as our rivals. Um, the closest one being um, Caltech over in Pasadena. So they'll try to prank Caltech uh, occasionally each year. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. Um, you know, harmless things generally, like uh, like filling a room with balloons, um, moving your friend's room from inside a room to like outside into the courtyard, like different things like that, that can, you know, be feel really just like, lighthearted, but like really entertaining at the same time. And again, because of the student run honor code, there's just general expectation that you will respect other people's boundaries um, in the same way that you you want others to respect you. Um, and I'll stop there because there, there's some other things that I could share about sort of like the prank culture, but it starts getting into spoiler territory in terms of like, yeah. oh, if you ended yeah. up coming here, you it may, no, it may no, ruin we, it may ruin it for you. We want to keep, we want people wanting more. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. All right. <laughs> Um, so as, as a STEM school, you know, what are some of the opportunities, uh, the students have, whether it be for research, what type of projects are they working on? Are, are it's so close to Los Angeles. I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities with internships and placements. What, what, tell us about that. Yeah. So we offer 10 majors. Uh, there are six departments offering those majors. So biology, chemistry, computer science, engineering, math, and physics. The one that is students call say most popular just by number of students in those majors are engineering and computer science, which makes a lot of sense. It's sort of, it's it's the world today. It's, it's what students have access to. Um, and it is like students sometimes ask, is it like more theoretical? Is it more hands-on? It's both. Uh, we believe that you should understand the theory so that you can use that theory to inform the choices that you're making once you are able to get your hands dirty. But what's great is this is a small school with 900 students. 
we actually require a research experience in order to graduate. So all of our students will do research um, sometime, well, usually at the end of their four years um, in their senior year as a senior thesis or something called clinic, but research can happen earlier. So, you know, we have about 200 students staying on campus every summer for research. All of our departments are active in research with different specialties. Uh, I did research in two different departments uh, after my first year in math, after my third year in biology. And then in my senior year, I participated in clinic. And so clinic is something we pioneered in the 60s. It's where organizations will sponsor a project uh, through the college. So something that they care about, they want to see you know, what students could do with. And teams of four to five will work on that project uh, over the course of a year. And so it could be students from all the same major, but more likely than not, it's students from different majors. So really taking advantage of, you know, different expertise and how those different expertise can come together in, in a project. And then we also have a good number of students who are doing internships over the summers. And so we have a pretty good reputation, um, especially now uh, with regards to you know, the ability of our students. So many of them will secure very well-paying internships sort of in the tech sector over the summers. And so in particular for students who are interested in computer science, we have like a career fair dedicated strictly to software engineering and, uh, and tech that we have in the fall. And then we have a second one in the fall that's just generally STEM. So we, we are going to make sure that students have the opportunity to really you know, get the education that will prepare them for the hands-on real world experiences that we also provide. Yeah, no, it sounds like great experiences and it sounds like uh, you're, you're demanding and what you ask of students, but important, right, that you are so that they're prepared for when they get out of there. But uh, so with that being as demanding as Harvey Mudd is, what type of student does it take to get into to Harvey Mudd? You know, GPA, classes, what are we looking at? Yeah, so we don't actually track a GPA, so I can't tell you anything about that. Generally speaking, we're hoping that students are challenging themselves at an appropriate level. Um, there's not a magic number of like AP scores or IB class. Well, I, I guess IB is more structured, but there's not there's not sort of like a magic number of classes, uh, challenging classes that a student needs to take. We do have an enrollment requirement, so we hope that students by the end of their senior year will have completed a year each of physics chemistry and in calculus. And I know uh, you guys are in IB school, right? Yes. And so um, for us, what that means is the analysis and approaches, mm -hmm. SL or HL, and then HL for applications and interpretations. Um, we, usually, we usually consider those as having enough calculus, um, but we also work with different schools just to learn more about the curriculum, knowing that there can be variants uh, in there. Uh, and so that's the that's the big one. Like we 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 do hope that students will be able to be exposed and take those classes and generally do well in them. We are also looking to see that you are challenging yourself outside of STEM. Right? As a liberal arts college focused on STEM, you're going to be taking classes on both sides. And so we'll, we hope you're doing that as well. And in grades wise, you know, A's and B's usually mostly A's. Those are the kinds of students that we offer admission to. Um, we hope it's a trend up or if it's just like good grades in general. Um, and then test scores were test optional for at least this next year. So for students applying for this year for fall 2023 entry. And so students with scores, if you want to show it to us, great. If you don't want to show it to us, it doesn't disadvantage you against students who do submit test scores. Um, and yeah, it, our students test very well. So I won't necessarily get into the specific numbers. You could actually find it on our website. But again, we're test optional. So if you don't want to show it to us or you don't have them to show, um, it's not anything that will disadvantage a student's application. OK, great. You, you brought up that we're an IB World School. Um, we have both the diploma program and the career related program. Uh, how does that weigh into the admissions process? Uh, does a diploma student have an advantage over a non-diploma student? What, what are we looking at? Yeah, I think so. Let me first say um, I didn't I, I went to an AP high school. Um, uh, I, I learned about IB once I when I once I started working in admission and I'm a huge fan of the IB diploma program, mostly because it really does nicely align with the kind of education that we offer here at, at Harvey Mudd in terms of like really believing in broadly educating you, but allowing you to develop expertise, you know, in, in a specific area. And so 
it's a it's a, it's an advantage in the sense that it really is preparing you well for the kind of education you're going to experience um, at how at Harvey Mudd and many other liberal arts colleges and that you know you're going to get to focus on STEM but we're also going to ask you to challenge yourself in you know in in disciplines outside of that and so it's an advantage in that sense but you know it's I don't necessarily go so to say that it's like oh it's an advantage over like a student who's going on AP school we read you within the context of like where you're coming from and mm -hmm. so you know what you have available will will sort of I will know or I will I will try to learn and find out what what's offered specifically um and so we, we just sort of look at you and just your overall preparation and it's not necessarily a comparison of like oh your school doesn't offer this or you offer this more than another school and so okay. it's just about like do we think you can graduate from Harvey Mudd, given what you've, how you prepared yourself in high school. Makes sense. So, so best to sum up by just saying, uh, you want, you want students to take the most rigorous course load that they can handle and, and be successful. In. Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, talk to us about, uh, Harvey Mudd's financial uh, piece here. So, right. You hear actual price for a uh, sticker price. Talk about the affordability. Yeah. So we, we have a sticker shock, uh, sticker price. Uh, it's at $85,000 a year. That's calculated using tuition, room and board, because all first year students are required to live on campus and will be on a meal plan. We also include in that other personal expenses, uh, books and supplies. And then for students from out of state, actually two round trip tickets to campus, right? So to arrive here in the fall, to leave and go home and break, to come back in the spring and then to go home for the summer. And so that's what we're calculating everyone at. Most students aren't paying the full cost. Um, we are we are very much a need based school. So if a family needs the support, we will provide the support. If the family doesn't necessarily need the support because they have resources to invest in their students' education, we will ask it. And so we have a range of students on campus, students whose families can support their whole education financially, and then for for a lot of students whose families need a lot of help in terms of the financial aid. So we're need blind. In, in admission. So when we review applications for US citizens and permanent residents, we don't consider what your financial aid uh, will look like. And so we make our decisions and then we pass you over to our, our trusted colleagues in financial aid, who we hope can make this an affordable option for you and your family. Um, we do offer some merit scholarships, but you know we're mostly need-based. And for us, when we offer a student admission, we're committed to meeting 100% of their demonstrated need. So whatever the cost, the cost of attendance minus whatever we we expect your family to contribute based on the FAFSA and the CSS profile, whatever's left, we will meet in full. Fair, very fair. Thank you. Um, talk to us about the application itself, right? What 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 are the major pieces you're looking for? How can a student stand out in the application process uh, when you're reviewing? And and just uh, you are reviewing the ones from New Jersey. Is that, is that I correct? am? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, for us, the first question we're trying to answer for every student is, I already mentioned, is like, do we believe you can be successful here? Um, so my job is to admit future alumni. I like to point that out. It's not to bring you here, you know, and be a student for a few years and then potentially have to leave. We are admitting you because we are confident that, you know, given your preparation and given the support that we offer, you'll graduate in four years as much as possible. Um, maybe five to six if, you know, additional time is needed, but for the majority of students in four years. And so the transcript is sort of the big part of that. But preparation is also answered, I think, by letters of recommendation um, and also like essays and just engagement overall, because your whole high school experience is preparing you, not just the, the classes that you're taking and you know, the grades you're earning there. I do try to tell students, you know, in, in this process, your essay is the one unique thing or the one thing that you create. Um, you know, if you didn't have to write an essay for college applications, I think most students wouldn't submit one. <laughs> uh, and it's the thing that you have to create. And it does leave an impression on us uh, when we read. And, you know, I'm not asking you know, students to try to come up with a perfect essay. I'm just asking you in, you know, in 550, 600 words to choose something about yourself that you want to tell us about. Um, I want to learn about you. Uh, and, you know, I don't just want to learn surface level things like, oh, I do well in classes or I'm interested in STEM. I will assume you're interested in STEM because you're applying to Harvey Mudd. 
I'll know you're doing well in classes. It's on your transcript. Um, and then other ways that you're sort of like succeeding, you know, I want to learn about like why you do what you do, um, who, who you do those things with, et cetera. And so I think for me, what I try to tell students is if you leave an impression in terms of like, if after I read your application, I've learned something about you, then you've done exactly what you need to do. And, and that's enough. Um, trying to stand out is a very subjective thing. Um, you don't know how other students are writing their applications. You don't know. I mean, you, you don't control that. And so, you know, just do your best to represent yourself um, truthfully and as completely as you want. And that's what we hope for. Um, worry less about trying to compare yourself to other applicants because you don't know who they are and you also can't control, you also can't control um, if or how they apply. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's, that's very important. Um, something I, I often say to my own children, uh, <laughs> as well to the students I work with here, where you worry about yourself and focus on what you can handle. So yeah, yeah. Um, truer words never spoken. Uh, okay, so look, you, you've you told us a lot of great things about Harvey Mudd. Uh, I mean, you've you sold me if I was a STEM kid and I, you know, being in Southern California, there's just not a bad place to be. Um, and you've got a great consortium to work with, good location to Los Angeles. I mean, is there anything else that uh, you think our students should know about Harvey Mudd College before we sign off here? Yeah, I think, you know, usually when we start a presentation, we, we talk about the mission of the college. Because um, for Harvey Mudd, in one sentence, you can, it captures exactly what we hope for students. And our mission says, we hope to, we seek to educate engineers, scientists, and mathematicians well-versed across those disciplines but also in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts, so that they may become leaders in their fields with an understanding of an, the impact of their work on society. In short, we want to make sure that we're educating well-rounded STEM people who know that their work will impact the world in some way, and we hope that they will want to engage that. Um, and I think we're a great school. We're one of the best options for students looking for STEM, especially if you're looking at a, a smaller school. But I also know we're not going to be for every student. Um, you know, the size, the size, the focus, it's not going to be for every student. Um, and so just keep that in mind, I, I would say to students. And, you know, I talked about how we're part of the consortium and how that's great. We're still a small school. And so you have to, you have to kind of want that or at least be okay with it because it's being part of being at a small school means it's hard to disappear into a crowd because there's not much of one. Yeah, re really, really good stuff, Jason. I appreciate that. Um, I think, uh, look, I think students watching this that are interested in STEM, uh, you know, will give Harvey Mudd a long, hard look. So I really appreciate the time today. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having us. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah.